I want to obey the Lord. It was as if yesterday was a time. And, you know, my prayer closet is probably not like y'all, like you know. But I was just praying, and then all of a sudden, as clear as anything, it, <laughs> just the thoughts came to me. It was, it was as if I was Peter. And, and the thought came to me, Reggie, do you love me? I said, yes, Lord. He said, feed my sheep. And then, Reggie, do you love me? I said, yes, Lord. Feed my lambs. Reggie, do you love me? He did it three times, but thought. Feed my sheep. My friend, I want to obey God. I want to do what God tells me to do. And I just want it to be. I want you to pray for me that I'll be directed. And what I have in my heart that needs to be said today is going to be different probably from a way that or what would be ever said. By, I don't know if anybody's ever said some of this stuff that can be said, except the Lord Himself. <laughs> but I want you to pray for me that I obey God. But what I what I notice is I study God's Word, and this is not going to be a sermon. I apologize. It's not going to be preaching. I apologize for that. It's going to be kind of like a a teaching. Or something that effect maybe I don't know what what we're gonna call it, but it it's something I feel today. To speak on the on the words of God in the Bible when you study your Bible when you hear from God you learn it's not by bread alone but by what every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God that has helped me so much. I don't read the Bible just read sentences and chapters and books of the Bible. I don't do like that. I used to just thought maybe I could just go ahead and read my three chapters real quick and then I couldn't tell you a word I read. I've learned that I'm to meditate. I've learned that I'm to chew on. I've learned to pray and seek God and meditate upon the Word of God. It's not how much you read. It's as if you are chewing that Word, meditating upon that Word. And knowing that word. But as you go through the word of God. One thing you know people want to encourage you to do this and this and that, that, that way. It doesn't matter if you read the Bible through in one year or not. That don't matter. What matters is do you know what you read? Amen. It'd be better to read one verse a day and know what it says than to read the whole book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John and not know a word it says. We need to chew on that word. When you open God's word, the first thing you see, you see God's perfect kingdom in control. And I want to tell you this because today is going to be a day that it'll be a time that you begin to wonder or think, what I don't quite see this just like that or I don't quite know that just like that or, or something like that but I want to make it very clear God's in control yes. Jesus Christ is Lord Amen. the devil is defeated yes, the devil will go to hell and burn forever the devil will never get out of hell when God puts him there go put him there for a thousand years turn him loose to give the Israelites or uh, Hebrews a second chance but you and I won't have that second chance Today's the day of salvation and if a Gentile does not get saved before the trumpet blows, that last trumpet, I don't care what anybody says, I'll take this right here and prove it. You cannot be saved without the Lord Jesus Christ. And how can a man or a woman, boy or girl, be saved unless the Spirit of God draws them? And when the rapture takes place, the Spirit of God is not on planet Earth you got to be saved before that trumpet blows. 
1 Corinthians 15, 52, in the last days and a moment, in the twinkling of the eye, at the blowing of, and even a preacher not long ago argued with me on the fact that it didn't say the last trumpet. I said, yes, it does. I opened the Bible, he said, you know, it does. In a moment, in the twinkling of the eye, at the sounding of the last trumpet, which is the seventh trumpet. You turn over into Revelation, you read that same same thing in Revelation. It says, when the last trumpet begins to blow, at the very first of the... It blows for a little period of time. When it first starts blowing, then the mystery is complete. The dead in Christ rise first. It, just like the Word of God says. That, that the Gentiles, the church, and being taken out, and every Jew or anyone who's born again, God's coming for His bride. If you're not born again and do not have the wedding garments on, you're going to be left here. A lot of people say, well, if I don't take the mark of the beast, I'll be all right. I can make it through the tribulation. I'll go to heaven. My friend, let me, let, let me tell you something. You can't be very smart. Excuse me for talking this way. But you cannot be a very smart person if you think you can be saved without Jesus Christ. If you even open this word in you, there's no other way to get to heaven except through Jesus Christ. Amen. So if I could get saved by not taking a mark, that is a work. Amen. That's only for the Jews during the last three and a half years of the tribulation, according to this word, that if they don't take the mark, many of them are going to be killed or whatever, and that's in God's hands. But, but if they don't have that mark and they're taking, God gives them a second chance. But let me tell you, the Jews that have died already, Paul says, I wish that you'll be saved. If you're not, you're going to go to hell. You've got to be born again. A Jew has to be born again. A Gentile has to be born again. You've got to be born again through the Lord Jesus Christ. God blinded the eyes of the Jews and closed their ears so he could open the door to me and you as Gentiles. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't make it. You know what day we're living in today? We're living in the day of the Lord. Yes, we are. But we're living in the day that God has opened the door for the Gentiles to be saved. But my Bible says that door will close. Just like the door to the ark closed, so will the door to the Gentiles close. It will be closed, but only open for the Jews, which will be the Jews' chance. The Jews' chance started off, God hardened their heart, God did that because he's God and he does not back up on his word. He did that because he's a God of his word so the Gentiles could be saved. He opened the door. It's wide open today for the Gentiles. And let me tell you something. I want everybody that even would hear this one way or another. You've got to be born again. You must be born again. Nicodemus was a smart man, but he could not understand what it meant by being born again. You've got to be born again. My friend, I'd rather be born twice and die once than to be born one and die two times. And what I mean by that is, if you've been only born once, you're going to die two deaths. You're going to die that natural, and the spiritual death is eternal separate from God, burning in hell, and the spirit never dies. Some people say, well, why come? Why come? God didn't just lock the devil up, burn him right there, and burn him up and destroy him because God's the God of his word. When God created everything God created, he created it for one reason. That was to worship and to praise him. Amen. That, that's what heaven's for. That's what angels are created for. And that's what everything is done for. God has done it because he's God. God knows what he's doing. But God, when he created the angels, he put in them the spirit. He said, the spirit... I will never destroy. That's what God said. So guess what? If God destroyed the devil, which he could and can, he would be going against his word. He says the spirit would never die. The spirit will always be no matter if it's an angel or you and I have the spirit of God. He would In fact, you've got more than angels. Some people say, oh, isn't that sweet? You know, they're an angel. I learned the definition of an angel. Well, they do. They are uh, up in the air harping all the time. <laughs> I learned that <laughs> from somebody, one of y'all out there. <laughs> it might be like, but let me tell you, they say, well, why don't God just destroy that devil? I don't understand why if God's God, God is love. Why is so much evil going on? Because God has said what would happen would happen, but it's 
having it in order that it can be that more people can come to Christ. God loves this world. He loves, no matter if it's Jew, Gentile, Greek, or what, no matter what color they are, no matter what, God is a God of love. And God wants us to be born again. How do you be born again? By asking Jesus Christ to come into your heart. So I'd rather be born two times, die once. And that, let me tell you, Paul says that if you die one time, it's no more than just pulling this coat right here I got on, pulling it off and laying it in that chair. I'll feel better without it. And that's what, that's what it is. You'll die just that one day. Because you die only a natural death. But before, let me tell you, before my body, if I was to die standing up before my body hit that ground, I believe this, I'll be standing before God. Amen. I do know that. And let me tell you, Jesus is Lord, and don't you even think different. So I'm telling you all that before we get into what we're going to talk about for the next couple of minutes. Jesus is Lord. He's in control. Everything's in control. God's not worried. I read the book. The war is won. But God's letting the course go because he said he would let it go. But when you read in God's Bible, when you read the Word of God, first you see God's kingdom in order. And some people, now I've learned this. I learned that I used to think I was smart. So now I've learned that I was not at all smart and still not. But I actually would argue the fact and with people, and they knew what they was talking about. I didn't, but I thought I knew more than they did. But you see, what we do sometimes is forget what eternity is. We forget that eternity is both ways. Well, if you're not careful, you think eternity began 6,000 years ago when Adam and Eve was created, and it's going on and it's going to go on in the future. What happened to tree and zillions and billions of years before Adam and Eve? What happened before God created the heavens and the earth? What was going on there trillions of years before he created all that? Let me tell you, we forget how big and don't know how big God is. The first thing we see is God's in control. God's kingdom is perfect. It's in order. Then as you study the word of God, the second thing you see, that he creates angels. And he even created the sun, the moon, the stars to praise him. And I enjoyed listening to the news not too long ago that said that they was able to listen and notice if they get, can get close enough to get the sound waves that every star and even the sun itself is sounding like an orchestra playing. It's making up just like a music. That's what they said. I didn't say it. I'm just repeating it. God says the moon, the stars, every star is praising him. So he created angels to worship and praise him. And he had one to be the song leader, which was the prettiest of every one of them. He got the big head. What was his name? Lucifer. Lucifer. He was leading the singing, and guess what Lucifer did? This is the second thing we see in the Bible. God's in control. He's still in control. The kingdom's in order. Then all of a sudden, Lucifer, he says, you know what? Now you listen to this, and you hear this good. The devil says, I don't have to listen to God anymore. Let me talk in a Mitt County language. I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. <laughs> Same thing, my friend. I don't. I can worship God anywhere the way I want to. I say exactly what Lucifer said. He says I don't need to, to do what God said. And you know what? He was so deceiving and had it so much into what he said that a third of the angels who were created perfect, they believed him. But let me tell you what. They come flying out of heaven. Didn't they? I mean, they didn't come flying. Their wings weren't even working. He, they got kicked slapped down back. But yet, God let it be. And it's for a reason. To let it course run. Because you see, God saw the day that I would stand right here and talk to you loving people. about his love and if he would have took care of everything 6,000 years ago or 100,000 years ago you and I wouldn't know what it's like 
We wouldn't make it. We wouldn't even be around. We wouldn't even be. And I'm glad that God has got a clock different from, from us. Amen. I'm glad he's in control. Believe me, he's in control. Keep remembering that now. Don't, don't, don't think different. But we see Lucifer rises up. He says, I can be as good as God. And what he says, I'm going to, and I want you to notice that he says, I'm going to even be higher. He said that than God. You can read that in a couple places in the Bible. I'm going to be as good or higher than God. I don't have to go be there to be what I need to be. And there's people today say, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. There's people who say, uh, I'm a Christian, but I have church at my house. Okay, that's good. That's good. But the only thing is, you can't have church at your house by yourself. Because you really need the definition of church. Anyway, I go on before I get in trouble. God says that we are to even gather and not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as matters of some is. But in the latter days, we need to gather more than ever. You hear it? We need the word of God. So we see Lucifer rising up. He says, I'm going to build a kingdom better than God's. I'm going to get built taller. I'm going to have a tower taller than God. That's what the devil said. God kicked him out of heaven. And then the next thing we see, and I turn to Genesis, the book of Genesis, chapter 1. The next thing we see, is, I better hurry up, Hannah. Genesis chapter 1. I didn't mean to get excited. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, but yet, beginning means a time could be put on to it. That was a t that was a period that time could not be put on anything because eternity you can't time it. It's forever, <coughs> and time matches don't run forever. You hear me? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Notice verse one. <coughs> now verse two. But what I've learned is. By every word of God, I begin to study the word of God and begin to chew on each word and find out what each word says in the Hebrew. And I was really astonished that some people in the past when I was trying to learn and thought I was so smart and thought I could teach the teacher, they were right and I was wrong. Many of them. But I noticed that it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it says the earth was without form and void, and darkness is upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. There is no telling how many millions of years between verse 1 and verse 2. God created the heaven and earth, and everything God creates is perfect. But something happened. If you study word for word, it says the earth became empty. The earth became empty and became without a meaning. It had a meaning. It had some, every whatever going on on it. And I got my ideas, but it's in the book of Reggie. But it was something going on. But I don't believe it was any man before Adam and Eve. But I do know there was angelic beings, and I do know there was a choir. And I know Lucifer was a choir leader. And so, you know, I got a thought that maybe Earth could have been Lucifer's choir lock. It's just a thought. And I have different reasons for saying that because of what is found buried in the ground is the same thing that's in heaven we walk on. Everything that we see in heaven is beautiful. It's on Earth. Every stone, everything, but you got to dig for it. It got turned upside down. The earth was without form. It means it became disturbed. Darkness came upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the war, water. All right, that's, that's the time there. But look, in verse 3, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. Now that's in verse 3. What day was that in the Bible? And that's another thing people get get uh, argue and actually get mad on, on you if you don't agree with them. We don't have to argue. You know, let's just let it be. 
But on day one, God created the heavens, the, I mean, the earth, and God said, let there be light. And he created light on, 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 on day one. That's clear, isn't it? Look at verse 3. It says, uh, it was good. Now, I want you to notice that's day one. But something happened between day one and day four. And no telling how long a period of time was between day one and day four. Why do I say that? Because I read every word of God. What did God do on day one? He created light. And he saw the light was good. All right, look at day four, which will be Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. And God said, let there be what? Lights. Something doesn't happen. In the firmament of the heaven, to divide the day from night, let there be the, for signs, seasons, for days and years. Let them be for the lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. My friend, it's like it became dark again, didn't it? Between verse 3 and verse 15. Look at verse 16. God made two great lights. The greater light to rule by day, the lesser light to rule by night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And to rule over day and over the night, divide the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning was what? The fourth day. He created light the first day. But then he had to create light on the fourth day because something happened there. Now I'm just letting you think, but I told you to start with. There's only one thing that's important to know. And that is that there's only one way to heaven. And that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul says, I want to tell you that you can know a lot. But I only want to know one thing. And that's Jesus Christ. Him crucified, buried, died. Third day he rose from the dead. And made a way for me to heaven. But I want you to notice that a lot goes on. And a lot has happened. I want you to notice that. All right. So we see. At day four, he created light. And then now look at verse 26. I'm going to hurry up. Genesis 1, 26. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Genesis 1, 26. God said, let us. He's talking to the, the Holy Spirit and, and to the Son of the living God, the Word of God. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea. And whether you like it or not, in my studies and what I see, I'm not smart. I'm not above anybody else. But the King James done better on this than the rest of the translations I've looked at. Now the other translations, many of them do great. But they don't do too good on this right here. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. And in an image of God created him, how did he create him? Male and female. Created he them. And I want you to notice what God says in verse 28. God blessed them. God said to them, I'm in the King James, which is the best, well, what I'm reading by Hebrew words now. Be fruitful, multiply, and some of your Bibles leave this word out. The King James says, replenish. You know what that tells me? There was something here. Before Adam and Eve. Sure. I'm not saying it's man. I believe it was the angelic force. It could have been the choir. It could have been the third of those other angels and Lucifer. That don't matter. That, that's just me. You just forget that part. But he says, replenish the earth to do it. And look what he, God told Adam. And by the name, by the way, God did not name 
in Eve. God named the woman Adam because there was one. God did not call her Eve. He called her Adam. Read it close. After the fall, then Adam named his wife Eve. Adam named her many so long a period later. Anyway, that's for how they charge not for that part. Replenish the earth to do it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that creepeth upon the earth. And, and God tells him what to do, have authority, and we now see. Now we saw God's kingdom in order. We see Lucifer rise up, and, and Lucifer tries to start his own kingdom, but God kicks him out and boom, not in heaven anymore. Then we see man created in the image of God. And we see that the earth is to be replenished. And that Adam is to have dominion over everything. In fact, Adam is to make sure nothing, now this is another thing, nothing would come on planet earth that does not, does not belong there. My friend, that surprised me. Adam is to be the king over God's kingdom that started, and Adam is, and Adam is, like you and I also, mankind, is to make sure nothing gets on planet Earth that God does not want to be there. He says it's yours, Adam, and you police it. But something happened. You say, well, Adam was perfect. Well, so was Lucifer. All the angels were perfect. Yes, even the third that failed. But Adam began to get slack. And the only time that God, the first time God said it's not good, it says it's not good in verse 18 of chapter 2. It's not good that man should be alone. See, God saw. And it was no surprise to God. He saw that Adam needed some help. So now... We got two. We got a male Adam and his wife. And they are to control things. They are to be an authority. But then now we see the next thing that happens. The third thing is that Adam and Eve is to be ruler over the earth. Or Adam is to be ruler. The fourth thing we see is in chapter 3. It's when Lucifer <coughs> steps into the garden. And probably not for the first time. But Adam was to never let him come, not the first time. And he gets into one of the creations. We call him now a serpent. And he begins to talk to Eve. But her husband is standing right beside her. He knew what was happening. But he wasn't doing his job. And that devil began to talk and connive. The devil would make a good car salesman, wouldn't he? <laughs> he had you yeah. buying a car without wheels on it. <laughs> but he talked to Eve and then she took of that fruit that God said don't touch her I mean not to eat and gave to her husband Adam he took it too and the next thing you know they separated from God and they ran in fear so we see that that the fourth thing we see is Adam falls Mankind falls. And now, guess what? Lucifer has the title deed for planet Earth that you and I is supposed to police over in the spirit. We see that. <clears throat> All right, why did Lucifer fall? Because he said, I won't be better than God, I don't need God. 
Why did the three third of the angels fall? Because they believed that they could be as good as God. They didn't need him anymore. They didn't need the Bible. They didn't need church. They didn't need fellowship. They, we don't need it. We can do better by ourselves. We don't need God to do what we want to do. We don't want God anymore. My friend, do you see where this is going? Do you see where we are today? All right. He talked to Eve into saying, you can be better than God. You can build a tower taller than God. She believed it, and she took part of it. And what I see now is what's happening today. See, in Genesis now, we go to Genesis chapter 10 and chapter 11 of Genesis, if you will, for the next few quick moments. And I'm not going to get as far as I thought I could. But I am going to leave enough with you that you're going to see something. But in Genesis chapter... Chapter 11, I want to look at first. And, and, you, and you're going to have to remember this and study it. Genesis chapter 11 talks about the Tower of Babel. And this epistle is very important. Because we see, we see the order of what happened. From where I started, we see that that very outline in that in the book of Genesis, chapter 10 and chapter 11, what I'm talking to you about, what we're leading up to. And, and we see here in this book that uh, there was one language, one speech, and that these people got together and I'm going to back up and tell you how they came together. And they says, uh, we're going to keep one language and we're not going to see. God says, be fruitful, multiply, and go into all the world, all the land. He's telling us today to reach out to the lost, to reach out. But they wanted to not be scattered, so they wanted one language. So therefore they said, we don't need God anymore. They said in verse 4, Go, let us build us a city and a tower who may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name that we be, lest we would be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. What they're doing, they said that God says we're to go here and go there. We don't need God. And they built a tower. They begin to build it. They even begin to build special bricks, it tells me there. Things that can support it so they can reach the heaven and get higher than God, they said. And we, and we won't need God anymore. All right, where did that come from? I back up to Genesis chapter 10 now, quickly. Chapter 10, verse 1. I want to get this in before we run out of time here. Genesis 10, 1. It talks about the generations of the sons of Noah. That's in Genesis 10. This is important, like all the Bible. And Noah has Shem... Ham and Jephthah. All right. Look at verse 5. By these were the islands of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families and their nation. You see, God did not want them to be just one. Because when God saw in verse 11 they got down and became one, it's amazing to me the Lord says in verse, I know I'm skipping around, but look at 11, 6. The Lord said, Behold, the people is one. They have all one language. This they be to do and know nothing to be restrained from them which they have retained to do. They have become one. They have become one to say we don't need God anymore. And that's what's happening to planet Earth right now. That's what's happening to America as I'm speaking to you right now. America is beginning to say, we don't need God. The one world government, where did it come from? You remember there that, that Noah, and I take up for it, there was no alcohol until after the flood because there was no bacteria to make that wine ferment. Noah gets a hold of some grape juice that fermented and began to drink it. He got drunk. And he didn't have his britches on. When you see somebody without their britches, they don't got drunk. <laughs> anyway, might be on the cares of this life or something. 
If you remember Ham, laughed and made fun of it. And the Bible says if you make fun, laugh, or mock your parents, you're cursed. And what happened was that Ham made fun of, of it. Look at verse 6 of, of chapter 10 of Genesis. Verse 6. And the sons of Ham are, the sons of Ham who made fun of Noah, Cush, Mazara, Puth, and Canaan. And look at verse 8 now. This is important. Look at verse 8. Now if this come from Ham, and the generations are cursed thereafter, if you make fun to the third and the fourth generation. That's what the Bible says. Look at verse 8. Cush begot, who is Ham's, of Ham's family, his bloodline. Who does Cush forget right there? Yeah. Nimrod. Nimrod. Now, I give you a history question. Who was the first one who wanted one world government? Nimrod. History will tell you that. And the best history book's right here. Nimrod says we don't need God. Nimrod says, in fact, the word Nimrod, if you look that word up, it means to rebel and say there's none can be higher than I am. Same words that Lucifer said. The same words that he said to himself, to a third of the angels, and to Adam and Eve. And the same words are being said today by that lying devil through the spirit of Nimrod, who was the first politician, the first politician in the Bible was Nimrod. He began to make promises. He said, we can, we can just have a world that would be better without God. Let's get rid of the Ten Commandments. Let's get rid of everything that talks about God. And we can have a world that will be just right. My friend, in closing, let me tell you. We've had people in the past, even I remember hearing on TV, that old President Obama himself says, anybody who leans to say they are a Christian, they are an unstable person. You see, they don't want Christianity. They want something else. They want a world without God. And God forgive me if I said anything wrong, but I believe I'm telling you the truth right now from there on. Nimrod, to rebel against God and say, I'm better than God. Nimrod built the city. He said, we're going to build a tower to reach heaven. And the word Nimrod also means confused, where also Babylon comes, where Babylon means a world without the Creator God. My friend, we're living today where people are beginning to follow that lying devil, just like Nimrod did, to think you could make it without God. Nimrod says you don't have to go to church. Nimrod says you don't even have to read your Bible. Nimrod says that you can even do this and that and the other and still be all right. Everybody is God's children. There's no hell. That's what Nimrod said. So where are we today? I turn it over to you, Brother Lynn. Let's have a, just an altar time, if you will, for a moment.